Hey boys and girls and boy girls and girl boys and girl builds and game boys. I've got some games I wanna show you, RPG Maker games to be exact. Now I know some of you may think that these are bottom of the barrel garbage made by amateurs. And you'd be right, so congratulations, pat yourself on the back because you've got at least a moderate amount of taste. However, I don't. Having fun is too mainstream for me, so I braved the sea of shitty porn to find those little hidden gems buried in the depths. And now I consequently present to you, my dear viewer, with... Just as a heads up before beginning, I'm not including any well-known games like The Witch House, Mad Father or Lisa. I'm trying to cover more unknown stuff here, so if you want to watch content about these games, go check out PewDiePie's older videos. First, let's begin with some weep shit. Here in Daughter is a game where you, surprisingly, don't fuck your daughter. It's in fact kinda wholesome. You're this legendary hero that saved the world many times over, and you're about to do it again, until the king, fed up with your arrogance, tricks you into drinking a de-leveling potion. So now you're back at level 1, and worse than that, you're stuck at level 1. Still, you're the hero and it's up to you to save the world, except that slimes can now beat the penis out of you. Luckily, a kind old pervert sees your predicament and offers to summon girls to help you in the fight. Why just girls? Because he's a haramancer, that's why. Armed with the perfect excuse for a harem, you gather your skimpy globose companions and go get the three magical McMuffins to defeat the Dark Lord. For three consecutive times. The overarching story is super shallow and it's there just to mock how samey the ARPGs are, but for a parody it's surprisingly well written. More than that, the interactions with the girls are cute as fuck. You'll be grinding just to unlock more dialogue with them. BE REAL GOD DAMN IT! Oh, and let me segue into talking about grinding. This game does it right, it's embedded into its design as a feature and a source of fun. Nearly everything in this game is tied to powering up your character, so whatever you choose to do, you're progressing in some way. For example, spending gold in the town generates town experience and eventually levels it up. The higher the level of the town, the better items and food it sells, the latter of which permanently boosts your stats. These little cycles of constant reward are nearly the same as those of mobile games, except without the intention of sucking your wallet dry. It ends up being just satisfying to the player and eliminating the numbness of repetition. And stick a bit with that last sentence, because I'm pretty sure the dev racked his brain trying to eliminate as most as he could the inherent boredom of RPGs. The game's combat is surprisingly fun for being turn-based, and that's because the game's flow is adaptable to what the player wants it to be. If you're just mowing down mobs to amass gold, you simply need to press auto battle and hold on shift to speed through the fight. On the contrary, if you're fighting the special bosses, you better slow down and think your moves, because the conflict usually comes down to managing the status debuffs that these bad lads inflict upon you. The small insignificant battles still make up like 80% of the game's fight, so Kudos to the dev for implementing Auto Bottle. I'd be ashamed if I got Carpal Tunnel by trying to unlock all the hot spring scenes. I'd probably lie about it though, like a friend of mine who got his wrist sprained by playing too much League of Legends. He swore to everyone for years that the injury was because of CrossFit, which, let's be real, is a pretty bad lie since League is a more respectable sport. Anyways, there's a bunch of things you can do in this game. There is a casino in which you can bet on the girls fighting each other. You can buy and decorate houses, raise monsters, go into the afterlife to try and kill all the bosses in one go, and climb a 1000 story high challenge tower, among many other things. I recommend you try the game if you're a low IQ guy like me. It's simple and fun, and it's got boobs on it. You can also download it for free in the link I left on the description, or if you're feeling generous you can buy it on Steam and support the developer. The paid version comes with extra dialogue, two secret characters and a bonus dungeon. Going from to postmodern sentimental mindfuck, we have The Endless Empty. In this game, you play as the remnant identity of a musician who just shot himself in the head, exploring the Dadaist landscape of the unconscious in an attempt to escape death. Along the way, you ally yourself with the neuron who sent the signal to pull the trigger and our dead dude's figments of anxiety, creativity, logic and anger. So, if you're really not into RPG Maker, you can still enjoy the story by watching Inside Out while on PCP. 
It's hard to say much about the game without entering a long discussion, but in short, this is a piece of art proper. From the amazing scenery to the soundtrack, the game is laser focused on the themes it wants to explore and conveys them excellently. The gameplay was a bit lackluster in Sami though. As interesting as the visual design was, the combat was never challenging, and the puzzles were super simplistic. Which is a shame because you spend half of the time doing precisely these two things. If you're a patient person and willing to try things that are more artistic, give this game a chance. It's out on itch.io and Steam and only takes 4 hours to complete. I guarantee it will make you feel superior to everyone else because of your appreciation for the true art in the underappreciated medium of videographic gaming. Oh, and as of now the game is a bit buggy. Nothing game breaking though, the dev seems to be working hard to patch things up. Also, keep exploring if you get lost. Some things your characters can get mixed in with the scenery, so if you're a bit persistent you'll find a way to progress. The game's more linear than it seems. Backing off on the artsy shit for a bit, we have Cubicle Quest. In this game you start off as a 25 year old guy in severe debt and an entry level job. Your objective is the same as that in real life, you get enough cash to stop stressing about having enough to exist and then do whatever the fuck you want. You achieve this through self-improvement that presents itself in the form of dungeon crawling. There is a work dungeon to get promotions, the tower of self-improvement to get special items and so on. What's different about this game is that the fights are very situational, forcing you to have a certain strategy depending on what challenge you're approaching. While this is certainly refreshing, fuck me, the game can get hard at times if you don't know what you're doing. So not only do you have this game that alludes specifically to all the shit you got to get together in your life, but also has you fail horribly at it. Thanks game, it's not like I play video games to try and let my worries fade for a bit and stop gnawing at me. If you're curious about this piece of software I suggest that you at least check a tip guide because you're gonna get lost. Even so, Cubicle Quest is quite charming because of its unconventional mechanics so give it a try if you got a financial personality. Though, I suspect that if you're that kind of person, you're still not gonna try it because you'll just go back to making Ponzi schemes on EVE Online, aren't you? Anyways, our last game in this shit show of a showcase is Heartbeat. In this Pokemon inspired RPG, you play as EVE, a conjurer having adventures around the world with her sapient cat. You meet friends, solve puzzles and practice animal abuse. You know, just like Pokemon. Except that this game has two very important and progressive features. First, you, the owner, can join your furry companion in battle and walk the opposing party with a pole. And second, every single important character is female. Because men suck dick. Well, a certain percentage of the male population sucks dick, the rest sucks clit. But I digress. As you can see, if you can see, the game is very pretty. The team that made this game knows their art direction. Just look at how adorned the background is. The music is also nice. The game has a card collecting mechanic. Buy it if 